Start of Chapter 5 Fulfilled Prophecies And He will show you things to come. Holy Bible, John chapter 16, verse 13 Refugee only for a while The Christians put great weight on the fulfillment of prophecies. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fulfilled many prophecies of the Old and the New Testaments. To them, the prediction of events is considered to be the function of true prophecy, true prophethood. The Prophet of Islam uttered many prophecies which are recorded for posterity in the Holy Quran. Here are a few taken at random. Number 1. Verily, he who God Almighty ordained the Quran for thee, he will bring thee back to the place of return. Surah Qasas, chapter 28, verse 85. Place of return is a title of the holy city of Mecca. During the Hijrat migration, when the Holy Prophet was fleeing from Mecca to Medina, it was a hopeless situation. Most of his followers had already migrated to Medina. Now it was his turn. Together with Abu Bakr as Siddiq, he had reached a place called Juhfa. When this assurance was given by God that once again he will return to his birthplace Mecca, and so he did. He migrated as a refugee and God returns him as a conqueror, fulfilling yet another prophecy. And he, Moses said, the Lord came from Sinai and rose from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran that is in Arabia. And he, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came with ten thousand saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. Holy Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 2. Superpowers in Conflict Number 2. The Roman Empire has been defeated in a land close by. But they, even after this defeat of theirs, will soon be victorious within a few years. With God is the decision in the past and in the future. On that day shall the believers rejoice. Surah Rum, Chapter 30 verse 2 to 4 the above prophecy was revealed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the year 615-616 of the Christian era. The Christian Empire of Rome had lost Jerusalem to the Persians, and Christianity had been humbled in the dust. In this holocaust between two of the superpowers of the day, the Mushriks, polytheists of Mecca, derived vicarious pleasure in the discomfiture of the Romans by the pagan Persians. The pagan Arabs naturally sided with the Persians in their destructive zeal and thought that the destruction of the Christian power of Rome would also mean a setback to the message of the Prophet, the true successor to Christ. While the whole world believed that the Roman Empire was being killed by Persia, it was revealed to him that the Persian victory was short-lived and that within a period of a few years the Romans would conquer again and deal a deadly blow at the Persians. Abdullah Yusuf Ali Within ten years of the revelation of this divine prediction, the prophecy was fulfilled. Challenge of the Qur'an Number 3 The Holy Prophet claimed that the Holy Qur'an was from God Almighty and that it was revealed to him by inspiration. The proof of his divine authorship is its own beauty and nature and the circumstances in which it was promulgated. To prove the veracity of his claim, he has placed before you many surahs. Can the unbeliever produce one like it? This is a standing challenge. An eternal prophecy of mankind's inability to equal or excel or to rival successfully any of its chapters. Your plea, I don't know Arabic, is useless. There are millions of Christian Arabs living today. The Christians boast that there are at least 10 to 15 million Coptic Christians in Egypt alone. And these are not all Falahins. Here is the challenge of God in his own words. A. This Qur'an is not such as can be produced by other than Allah. Holy Qur'an, chapter 10, verse 37. B. Say, if the whole of mankind and jinns were to gather together to produce the like of this Qur'an, they could not produce the like thereof 
even if they backed up each other with the help and comfort. Surah Bani Israel, chapter 17, verse 88. See, or do they say, he forged it? Say, bring then a surah like unto it, and call to your aid anyone you can besides Allah, if it be that ye speak the truth. Surah Yunus, chapter 10, verse 38. D. And if ye are in doubt as to what we have revealed from time to time to our servant, then produce a surah like thereunto, and call your witness or helpers if there are any besides Allah. If your doubts are true, but if ye cannot, and our surety you cannot, then fear the fire whose fuel is men and stones, which is prepared for those who reject faith. Surah Baqarah, chapter 2. Verses 23 to 24. It is now 1400 years since the above challenges, but mankind has singularly failed to produce anything similar to something better. This is an eternal testimony of the divine origin of the Holy Quran. Christian Arabs had a try. The Arab Christians in the Middle East, not to be outwitted, launched a 16 year project lately and produced selected portions of the New Testament in Arabic with a wholesale borrowing of words and phrases verbatim from the Arabic Qur'an. It is an ignoble attempt. In this unashamed plagiarism, every chapter of this new Arabic New Testament of theirs begin with the verse of the Holy Qur'an, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, In the name of Allah, Most Gracious, Most Merciful. Surah Fatiha, Chapter 1, Verse 1 can you beat that? There are many challenges and prophecies in the Holy Quran and in the Ahadith, traditions of the Prophet, which can be expounded. It is a neglected field. Perhaps books can be written on the subject. I trust that Muslim scholars will take up the challenge. But let me end this theme of prophecy with one last reference from Allah's Kalam, the Book of God. Islam to prevail. He it is he who has sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth, that he may proclaim it over all religion, even though the associators may detest it. Surah Saf, chapter 61, verse 9. Within decades, the above promise became true. Islam prevailed. The two superpowers of the day, the Persian and the Roman empires, crumbled at the hands of the Muslims. And for centuries the power of Islam predominated from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Alas, the Muslims are in the doldrums today. But fear not, the world of Islam is arising. There is hope. Even non-Muslim visionaries in the West have predicted its destiny to be in the skies. Africa is a fair field for all religions. But the religion which the African will accept is a religion which best suits his needs. And that religion, everyone has a right to speak on the subject, says, is Islam. The Shape of Things to Come by H.G. Wells If any religion has a chance of conquering England, nay Europe within the next hundred years, that religion is Islam. George Bernard Shaw Without any real effort on the part of the Muslims, we are told by the Westerners themselves that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world today. I hope this pleasant news does not lull us to sleep. The promise of God is true. The destiny is there. Only a little exertion is required on our part. Allah can transform nations and peoples by his own will, but he has given us the privilege of serving his deen by a personal self-sacrifice. To be an effective soldier in this battle, Arm yourself with John 16, 7 in one or more languages and watch how Allah fills you with more knowledge. It is our destiny to master, supersede and bulldoze every ism, never mind how much the unbeliever may be averse to the message of Islam. Glorifying Jesus He, the Spirit of Truth, shall glorify me, Jesus, for he shall receive of mine and shall shew it unto you. Holy Bible, John Chapter 16, verse 13. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Holy Bible, John, 
chapter 15, verse 26. This promised comforter, even the spirit of truth in whom truth is personified when he comes, will bear witness to the truthfulness of the Messiah and absolve him from the calumnies of his enemies. This Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-Amin, the prophet of truth eminently succeeded in doing. He made it possible that today a thousand million Muslims believe in Jesus Christ salam, as one of the mightiest messengers of God. They believe in his miraculous birth, which many modern day Christians, even bishops do not believe. And they also believe in his many miracles, including those of giving life to the dead by God's leave and healing those born blind and the lepers by God's leave. What a mighty testimony! Listen to the moving terms of the story of his Annunciation. Miraculous Conception And mention in the book the story of Mary when she withdrew from her people to a place in the east. And she placed a screen to screen herself from them. Then we sent unto her our spirit that appeared to her as a man in all respects. She said, I take refuge in the All-Merciful from you, if you fear Allah. He said, I am but a messenger come from your Lord to announce to you the gift of a holy son. She said, How can I have a son, seeing that no man has touched me, and I am not unchaste? He said, Even so your Lord has said, Easy is that for me, and that we may appoint him a sign unto men and a mercy from us, it is a thing decreed. So she conceived him and withdrew with him to a distant place. Surah Maryam, chapter 19, verses 16 to 22. At the present moment, a billion Muslims throughout the world accept the immaculate conception of Jesus salam, on the authority of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alone. Jesus, his mother Mary, and the whole Christian world can never thank Al-Amin, the spirit of truth enough. Jewish response to Jesus. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I, Jesus, have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, but she would not let me. Holy Bible, Matthew, chapter 23, verse 37. That mighty messenger of God went after the Jews like a hen after her chickens, but they turned on him like vultures to tear him into pieces. Not satisfied with their relentless assaults and harassment and the eventual attempt on his life, they charged his mother for having ill begotten him in sin. That day the Jews rejected faith, and they uttered against Mary a grave false charge. Surah Nisa, chapter 4 Verse 156. What was that grave false charge? The nearest to uttering the actual calumny, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the true glorifier of Jesus alayhi salam, in John chapter 16 verse 13, is made to record, O sister of Aaron, thy father was not a man of evil, nor thy mother a woman unchaste. Surah Maryam chapter 19 verse 28. What say the Talmudists? The Jewish charge of the illegitimacy of Jesus salam, and the adultery of Mary is referred to here as an insinuation of the Jews, questioning Mary's chastity. The Holy Quran does not stoop down to even reproducing the actual monstrous slander. Now compare this Quranic terminology with what the erudite and famous Reverend Demelo, backed by no less than a team of 16 Christian divines, all reverends and deities, as to their choice of words in recording the calumny of the enemies of Christ. The Jewish Talmudists said, The son of the adulteress, that is of the Virgin Mary, brought magic out of Egypt by cuttings which he had made in his flesh. Jesus practiced magic and deceived and drove Israel to idolatry. It is interesting to notice that Muhammad indignantly repudiated these Jewish calumnies. Demolo's Bible, Commentary, page 668. Evangelist corroborates Jews. Josh McDowell, described as a graduate of Wheaton College and Magna Cum Laude graduate of Talbot Theological Seminary, 
and who is reputed to have spoken to more than 5 million students and faculty at over 550 universities in 53 countries, seems to have done more research than the whole galaxy of biblical scholars. Mentioned above on the subject of the Jewish Talmud regarding the birth of his Lord. In his book, Evidence That Demands a Verdict, just to prove that Jesus was not a myth but a historical person, he quotes extensively from the Jewish Talmud without any inhibitions. I give you below a few brief excerpts from pages 85 to 86 of his book. Tol dot Yeshu, Jesus is referred to as Ben Pandera. Ben Pandera means son of Pandera, a Roman soldier alleged by the Jews to have raped Mary to produce her illegitimate offspring. May God forbid. May he forgive us for even reproducing such blasphemies. Yeb 4.3.49a Harshimian bin Azai said concerning Jesus, I found a genealogical role in Jerusalem wherein was recorded such an one is a bastard of an adulteress. Joseph Klausner adds to the above. Current editions of the Mishnah add to support the words of our Yahoshua who in the same Mishnah says, what is a bastard? Everyone whose parents are liable to death by the Beth Din. That Jesus is here referred to seems to be beyond doubt. Missionary lolls his tongue. Josh McDowell, the great evangelist, born again Christian, worshipper of Christ, filled with the Holy Ghost, lolls his tongue when quoting calumnies of the enemies against his Lord and God, Jesus. And the Christian world laps it up. His books are bestsellers in Christendom. A taste for filth and insults has been created in the votaries of Christ. I refuse to quote further from that filthy narration. If Jesus has such devoted friends, what need is there for him to have enemies? Muhammad wasallam really was the true friend, the comforter, the helper, the advocate, the glorifier, the testifier of these prophecies in John chapters 14, 15 and 16. Let me repeat the ungrudging tribute of his enemies to this benefactor of Jesus, his mother Mary, and humanity at large. It is interesting to notice that Muhammad indignantly repudiated these Jewish calumnies, Reverend Damalo and his associates.